This is Captain's Log with your host, Captain Mark Gray. Welcome aboard. Underwater demolition, missile firing, shore bombardment. The Navy must test all of their men and equipment on a daily basis. And in the same ocean you're in. We'll explore this and more next. Racing at 140 miles per hour. It's all in a day's work for world champion race driver Bill Seaboard. When Bill's not racing, he's out pleasure boating, following the safe boating rules. He knows that over half of boating accidents are alcohol related. That's why it's against the law to operate a boat while intoxicated. Take Bill's advice. Next time you're on the water, think before you drink, and don't forget to put on one of these. Smart skippers stay sober. A boating safety message from the United States Coast Guard. My guest today is Jeff Ballou, GS-12, out at Point Magoo Naval Station. Could you give us a brief job title and description, sir? Sure, Mark. My job at Point Magoo is a range control officer. I'm one of four that we have out there. And my responsibilities primarily include the real-time management of all the range assets during the process of conducting test operations, mm -hmm. which of course, one of the issues that we would address are the, are the boaters out there that are in our and what we would define as hazardous areas. Mm -hmm. what t could you give me a list of what types of maneuvers the Navy does out there, such as underwater demolition? How many different types of man maneuvers are going on and over what size area? PMTC is comprised of about 23,000 square miles of surface area. Mm -hmm. And we test uh, surface to air systems, we test uh, air to air systems out there. We also uh, do ship-to-ship -ship systems, ship-to-surface, ship-to-air, a little bit of everything, underwater demolition tests, and um, uh, it's, it's a real variety of tests. So it's several thousands of square miles that you could be in at any time uh, performing maneuvers Very on a regular basis. Very easy, yes. And uh, how do the boaters become aware of this, or do you have planes and boats and radio that you you know, uh, enlighten boaters as to what's going on and where and when? Prior to conducting any test, we have geometrically shaped areas that we define as hazard areas. That might be the, an, like a square or an octagon. It could be uh, a triangle. These areas are usually comprised of several hundred square miles. We let the Coast Guard, 11th Naval District down in Long Beach, know that we will be conducting hazardous operations and we send out a request to them to publish for the, for the boaters a um, notice to mariners. Mm -hmm. That comes out, uh, we use no less than five days prior to the operations that we're conducting, usually two weeks as a, as a good lead. There's about 8,000 addressees in this area mm -hmm. that receive those things. So to their home or business? Or commercial, some commercial operations do receive them through their home if that is in fact their, their business address. Such as a fisherman or something like That's that? That's correct. Commercial fishermen. Uh, they're available here in the harbor areas at most of the uh, boating facilities. And what these areas, it tells the hazardous area the time that it will be activated. And then um, the Coast Guard also on a daily basis makes a broadcast at 8 in the morning. What they do is they hail all mariners on channel 16. On the marine radio for non-boating friends that are buying the first boat. You know. Okay, right. It's <laughs> channel 16 marine VHF FM radio and then they switch you to a discrete channel. Channel 16 is a an emergency channel and a hailing channel so they'll take you to a discrete channel and then they will make the broadcast and the content of the broadcast is that there are hazardous operations being conducted mm -hmm. within a specific area. That's usually done 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, it can be more frequent if, if the nature of the opera, if it's more urgent. Um, we also, prior to conducting any operations on the range, have to ensure that there are no boaters in the hazardous areas. We will not endanger a boater, whether it be a commercial fisherman or a, a pleasure boater. The way we, if they haven't, avail themselves of the notice to mariners and they're in there anyway. For instance, like if you're on a sailboat and your battery power is very limited, you don't want to drain your radio, you only use it for a mayday or if you want to make a phone call over the radio to receive one. Uh, and perhaps if they're not aware that this goes on at 8 in the morning, 8 at night, then, uh, you know, uh, 
they might not get that report on the radio, so you're going to send someone to the rescue, right? That's correct. We're not going to shoot with them out there. We use um, three types of assets for, for clearing the range area. We use um, a large four-engined aircraft called a P-3. It's a, an anti-submarine chase-type work air, air, aircraft. And they will go out and they will fly over the hazard pattern areas. They will identify boaters. Frequently, we can get the name of the vessel and the CF numbers that are available on the boat. And we give them a call on Channel 16. So if you see, uh, like, for instance, if they didn't hear the report at 8 o'clock because they didn't have the radio on, they might not hear you, you know, when you're calling them on 16. So a good warning might be if you're a boater and you see what looks, appears to be a military airplane buzzing you close enough to get your CF numbers, you should probably turn your radio on if you have one. Right. We're not going to get too close to you. I want you to understand that. But we would be, yeah, it would be an unusual activity. They'd fly in a circle around fly you. Fly in a circle or a tight circle around mm -hmm. you. And they wouldn't look like a private aircraft, no, I wouldn't imagine. No, this is like a, a large, Cessna. Or, no, it's a large gray four-engine aircraft. That's mm -hmm. one type of aircraft we use. It has, um, some of the aircraft have uh, Marine Channel 16, which they can talk to you on. Mm -hmm. If you're not monitoring Channel 16, it probably would be prudent at that time when you see the aircraft, like you said, to... Uh, switch your battery on for a few minutes and come up on the radio. We also use helicopters. They are uh, occasionally civilian helicopters. They contract to the Department of the Navy and they have a loud hailer system on them mm -hmm. where they can actually stand Fly off over you and talk to you and yell at you over a real powerful loudspeaker system. We also use Navy boats out of Port Wanimi Harbor and uh, they can pretty much come right up to you and they'll be talking to you either on radio or they can talk to you with a handheld mm -hmm. uh, hailing system. What they would do, basically, once they have told, well, they'll, first of all, they'll tell you that you are in a hazardous area. They will ask you to move. Uh, we realize that if you haven't gotten the broadcast, in the case of a commercial fisherman, for example, or a commercially operating dive boat, uh, which may have fishermen or may have divers in the water, or you might have uh, nets in the water. We are going to ask you if you can bring your divers up and relocate yourself, or if you can pull your nets up and relocate yourself. We realize that's time consuming, mm -hmm. and uh, we won't lightly make that kind of request. Mm -hmm. But you know, concurrently, the, the, the boaters have to remember too that. Uh, if we're asking them to move, it is because they are in a hazardous area and because they are holding up an operation mm -hmm. that costs literally a thousands of, of dollars an yeah. hour. Yeah, to and those it. men and equipment, as I said in the beginning of the show, have to be trained, you that, know, and tested. That's And correct. operational, you know, for national security. And it has to be in a real-time marine environment mm -hmm. uh, out here uh, at PMTC, whether it be high seas or, or calm seas, it has to be reflective of what they might encounter. What if, what if someone say, and there are people that believe it or not, and you probably know, go to the islands on a windsurfer or a little raft, and uh, they climb up on the islands and disguise their raft, you know, so they can sneak around because they don't have permission. Uh, what if someone like that is up on the islands where, when you're having shore bombardment? Well, PMTC, and they don't want to be seen. Right. Well, you PMTC know, in our area, we do not do uh, mm -hmm. actual bombardment of shore mm -hmm. facilities. There are areas further south in California where that, that is, is a practice. The um, islands out at, in the Channel Islands chain, for example, that's out here, uh, one of the islands is military owned. One of them is in a restricted area. Could you name those islands? San Miguel Island has uh, restricted areas around the east end of the island, uh, which is, we have a pontoon barge out there that we bomb and we strafe. Uh, the island itself is operated by the, um, the wildlife and marine people. And um, Santa Rosa Island is military owned now, but operated by the Park Service. Santa Cruz is a privately owned island. Mm -hmm. Anna Kappa is a, is a privately owned facility. San Nicolas Island, which is about 60 miles southwest of Ventura area, mm -hmm. is would, a military what island. What would that be uh, in line with down the coast? What city? So uh, people can get an idea of the reference. Thousand Oaks. Mm -hmm. you know, That's down. north of LA, south of uh, Ventura, Santa south Barbara. Ventura, and about 60 middle. miles west. Mm -hmm. 
So we don't we conduct act activities that use those islands. It might be a base or a platform for a test system, but we don't bombard them here. This way. The uh, naval bombardment areas for island work are primarily down in the San Diego area, San Clemente Island. This is one of them that's used. Okay, well, I see we have to go to a break, and we'll be right back in a couple of minutes to discuss the report to Mariners in more detail and uh, where you can find it, such as the uh, Harbor Patrol carries a report, and they'll make you a copy, and what's in the report to Mariners for our new friends in boating. So we'll be right back after this. Catalina Yachts blend of quality and affordability has maintained their 20-year reputation as a sailor's choice nationwide. I've owned a Catalina 27, a Catalina 36, and now this beautiful 42. My boats aren't just for pleasure. Their high resale value makes them a justifiable investment. A couple of years ago, some friends of mine took me sailing for the first time, and I fell in love. This is my new Catalina 30. It's got a TV, microwave, telephone, hot and cold running water in the galley head and shower. I've even got a wood-burning fireplace. Now that's comfort. Hi, my name is Wayne Noftal. I own a charter company called Imagine Yacht Charters in Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. And this is our second Catalina 42. And the reason we, we were choosing Catalina 42s over other boats, well, we, we've obviously done a lot of shopping. And pound per pound, foot per foot, dollar per dollar, you can't beat them. The boat sails extremely well. It's very easy to sail. Everything is let off. One person can sail a boat. It's a great charter boat. It's got a lot of room on deck. It's got a, a lot of room below. If you're in the market for a charter sailboat, you owe it to yourself to sail a Catalina 42. Believe me, the boat will sell itself. I've been sailing all my life and raced on most every boat made. My boat's a Catalina Capri 37. She's a lifetime of one design racing with a high resale value versus a custom-built racer that's here today and outdated tomorrow, Catalina. Catalina yachts are time-tested in the sailor's choice with over 50,000 boats made with pride in the USA. The nation's largest builder of sailboats invites you to call for free literature and a Catalina dealer in your area. Call 1-818-884-7700. Begin sailing your dream boat into reality today. Get to the end of the We're back with Jeff Ballou, GS-12, Range Control Officer out at Point Magoo uh, Naval Base. Uh, could you elaborate on the report to Mariners? I understand you have one here. and Show us what uh, is covered by it so that the new boaters out there would have an understanding of what topic areas are covered. Well, the, the local notice to Mariners is prepared for publication every Monday. It's usually out shortly thereafter to all the users, which would be the marina mm -hmm. facilities and the boat shops. But any private boat owner can get on the mailing list, right? Any private boat owner, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Have it sent to his box, and uh, he has a fresh copy, boom. Or he can go to the Harbor Patrol, have there's, him make a copy. There's for the a small Coast charge Guard. for the service, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's available to anyone. Mm -hmm. And the it sections. may save your life. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Guaranteed. And, and, and Can we show this? Sure. Uh, can you, do you have a shot of that? That's basically what it looks like. It's uh, just a little, several pages typed off. It breaks down into several spe uh, sections that are, uh, one of them is the special notices. And then the boating safety courses, it lists where they're available, times. What, what are the special notices? I mean, is there... What is that like? There's a party going on at, at San Clemente, and no, this, there there are several areas that uh, we have to look at. First of all, the area that we are in right here is addressed as Hydro Pack, which Hydro, of course, for the water, and Pack for Pacific. There are Hydro Lance, which would be for the East Coast areas. Mm -hmm. That breaks. That's the overall large area. Part of that area is Nav Area 12 which is the area immediately around uh, the Ventura area. Mm -hmm. Does and that stand for Navigational Area 12? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, those, I'm not sure how many sections there are mm -hmm. worldwide, but the entire world area is broken down into to nav areas. And then we go into local notices. So it's, what we've done is gone from a very large umbrella down to a very specific area. Mm -hmm. And the local notice to Mariners, which address the users in this area. Mm -hmm. 
What if you're just cruising through around the world? Would, is there a large report that you come up with that covers all the areas? There is a large report that covers the areas. If, for example, uh, we have what we call a, a coastal pilot mm -hmm. available. This particular issue is Coastal Pilot 7, and it talks about the Pacific Coast, California, Oregon, Washington, Hawaii areas. There are the same charts, or the same publication available to cover the world. Mm -hmm. Does this, it come out weekly? Or no, this is a yearly or publication. Yearly. And then, of course, mm -hmm. the smaller Notice to Mariners update the areas. On a weekly basis. On a weekly basis. basis. Right. So what would be the next topic area? Um, then what we look at of area of particular interest to us would be the California, Southern California military operations. Mm -hmm. And what this does, it advises you that military operations will be conducted as shown below. And it talks about danger zones and restricted areas. And this particular issue, they break the areas down into San Miguel Island, which we talked about mm -hmm. before. And they tell you that it is a danger zone. It tells you the chart our charts which display San Miguel by, Island. By number, for instance, 1841 or... Or 18721 mm -hmm. in this case for San Miguel. The schedule of the activities at San Miguel Island, and in this case is intermittently on a daily basis. And it tells you what is happening, what, what makes it a hazardous area, and in this case it's a missile firing. Mm -hmm. It also lists underneath the missile firing a telephone number, a commercial telephone number, that is at Point Magoo in our range operations center. And that is the, they're the folks that conduct the re, the moment to moment type operation or, mm -hmm. or watching everything for us. Is it an 800 number or a regular number? No, they're not, they're, they're, it's an 805 area mm -hmm. code in this area and then the telephone number is 989-8841. Mm -hmm. So if you in call the Channel them, Islands area. In the Channel mm -hmm. Islands, Ventura, Santa Oxnard, Barbara area. Santa Barbara area, 805 area. So you could actually be on your marine radio if you're just cruising through. And if you had a list of the phone numbers, you could make a call by your marine radio to that number and say, hey, I'm going through this area. Are you guys blowing up anything? You know? <laughs> yes, you can. We do frequently yeah. get uh, mm -hmm. ship shore calls, mm -hmm. uh, especially for transients going through the area. Because, again, they have, an, uh, they have a publication like Coastal Pilot. Mm -hmm. And in the Coastal Pilot section, in this particular area where we are right now, it shows those telephone numbers. It's a description of, of the Pacific Missile Test Center mm -hmm. operating areas. And so you have them right there when you're sailing through that area. You, it would be smart to have uh, your list made up and just make the calls. Right. Either be, if you're at shore, if you're cruising through on a steady basis, just call them off. So we have about a minute or two left. And if you could breeze through the topic areas there, sure. we'll then cover it, that one. It covers also, in this particular hazardous area, it covers Pacific Missile Test Center, large area. Also, San Clemente, San Nicolas Islands. What will be happening there on the uh, on the other side of the missile Mariners. firings? In the case of uh, Point Magoo, small arms firing off the shoreline at Point Magoo because we have to train the uh, the Seabees to use their small small arms weapons. And they then, fire out into the ocean. No, or? they don't. But we protect an area off the shore. They fire into a large sand berm mm -hmm. that stops everything, but we still protect the area there around mm -hmm. the ocean. So we don't want any boaters sitting out there shooting anything <laughs> straight or ricocheting. Shooting out. back at them. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. And then the area, it goes into all the southern area, California areas here. It also lists the nav aids available for boaters. And if the nav aid is not operating properly or if it's going to be taken down for preventative maintenance, it That's would let you. aids to navigation such as buoys, lights, correct. all that. Temporary changes. If you take a, a, a buoy that's normally there out and replace it with a temporary facility, mm -hmm. you also know that. Or if you show one down or that's shut correct. one down. And then proposed changes to aids in navigation. And then, of course, it gets into more specific areas like procedures within the Long, Los Angeles, Long Beach, Inner Harbor area. How to enter that area and who to contact, who to talk to. Could I see that? No. Worthwhile Could publication. Check it out. I know. I also noticed they have uh, boating safety courses listed, such as the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary and Power Squadron, American Red Cross, um, colleges, and all that type of thing, which is nice to know. And they have the seal of safety, which is not mandatory, but the Coast Guard Auxiliary will give you a free, no cost, no obligation uh, examination of your boat to make sure you have the proper safety equipment. That uh, could very easily save your life. Yeah. Then the military operations, the uh, 
things of that sort. Well, I see it's time to take a little break again, and we'll be back to finish this up right after this. We're back. Uh, Mr. Blue, could you tell me about the other publications where you where they're accessible, or do you have to buy them? Can you be on a mailing list and show us what they look like? Sure. Some of the publications are available for free through the Coast Guard. However, the one I find the most useful as a boater in this area, and any area for that matter, if I'm boating on the East Coast or the West Coast, would be the United States Coast Pilot. Mm -hmm. And that is available from the U.S. Department of Commerce, mm -hmm. uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric mm -hmm. uh, Administration. Do you have an address there or a phone uh, number? It is that? out of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, it is for sale. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not sure what the cost is. And, uh, and it's a yearly publication. It is a yearly publication with uh, updates through the year mm -hmm. if there are significant changes. Mm -hmm. Another one that's useful for boaters, too, is the Radio Navigational Aids, mm -hmm. which is published. This is an older copy, 1982, but that's also mm -hmm. available to the public uh, for Pacific a small show. Pacific and Indian Ocean uh, area, I noticed. Mm -hmm. That's quite a large area. That's a large area. The mm -hmm. world is primarily broken down, as far as these folks are concerned, into about three areas. And for non-boating people out there, as I say, the show's intended for people coming into boating. New pers persons, could you tell them what radio navigational aids are, briefly? There are facilities on shore that allow vessels in the water to determine exactly where they are. And uh, there's, all, in addition to the more sophisticated satellite systems, there are types of radios available to them. And they can actually, between two stations, they can take a cut, in other words, get a radial off that station, and then get a radial off another station that intersects, mm -hmm. and they know exactly where so they this, are. So this would be uh, get a fix by two bearings on two different beacons or radio stations. Exactly. Uh, you can use even commercial radio stations. Mm -hmm. And that's usually referred to as RDF, or radio direction right. finding equipment for the, uh, for instance, Long Beach might be beep, 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 and that's all you hear. It's an yeah. identifier in Moist Code on that particular beacon or that radio station that tells you when you check that moist code, who it is, so you know that you're homing on the right station. And that, I'd like to say, too, for like little kids or people that go out with a little Walkman, AM, FM, Walkman type radio, and they're out sailing outside Santa Barbara Harbor, say, um, if they're familiar with the local area, such as KISS, K-I-S-T radio, has an antenna right on State Street, which aims right into the harbor, uh, they could actually take the AM radio turn it to KISS radio, and when you turn it and you hear static on an AM, that's called the null, and you know that it, you either have to go that way or that way. You have to know which general direction you're going. If you're heading toward the shore, but, though, you know you're headed toward mm -hmm. that antenna source. Yeah. If the and fog, if the fog of... came up and they knew which way shore was, they could find the null and head in, and it'd bring them right back to uh, the wharf. That's a correct. That's a, a rather simplistic or a crude way of doing it, but that certainly is a it way it would work in an emergency. That's right. And That's for right. young children out in a, in a Sabbath or something, uh, I understand that you did want to emphasize that hazardous op operations are going on all the time and that people really have to be aware of this. And so it's not a matter of maybe you want to get the books or the report to Mariners and check it out, but it may save your life to have this. That's correct. PMTC, which is Pacific Missile Test Center, does conduct hazardous operations frequently around the clock. We are a user of that area just as, as the recreational or the commercial boaters are. And, uh, and they're, you're out there all the time. And with that, we're out of time. So I'm going to have to wrap it up and say, this is Captain's Log. Please be safe. Find out as much as you can on how to be safe. And these guys can certainly help you. And watch Captain's Log. So 